Welcome, I'm Emily Mallory, and I am thrilled to be showing you how to create your very own gift box or snack bowl or decorative box for you to have around your home. Today, I'm gonna to be using a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. So the bigger your piece of paper, the bigger and deeper your box is gonna be when you're all finished. You can go down to like one inch by one inch if you want to make a little teeny tiny little surprise box. It's up to you as long as it's a square piece of paper. So it could be two inches by two inches, six inches by six inches, eight by eight, whatever dimensions you want. It could even go odd, five by five, as long as it's a square piece of paper. I'm gonna get started by using the white side though, because I'm gonna hide the white side. So we're gonna start by taking the bottom point and folding it to the top to create a giant triangle. And because you're making a gift box, you will need to do this twice. However, if you just want an open box, then you only need to do one piece of paper. But if you want a lid, you'll need to make two. And you might even consider trimming your second piece of paper just a little bit on two sides so it's a little bit smaller, so it'll fit inside. So we're gonna unfold our big triangle and I'm gonna rotate it once. So the fold that we just put in there is now going vertically. And I'm again gonna take that bottom point and fold it to the top to create a giant triangle. And if it's easier for you to fold at the table, please fold at the table. That's normally where I like to fold, but this way you can see the whole big box and everything all at once. So now we're gonna unfold. And looking at your paper, you're gonna see a great big plus sign right in the middle of your paper. Next, we're gonna do the same fold four times. So we're gonna take this top point and we're gonna fold it down to the center. We have to cheat and look here a little bit. And we're just gonna fold it over. And then while I'm still on this side, I'm gonna take this edge on the top and I'm gonna fold it so it lines up with that horizontal or side to side crease going right through the middle of our paper. Over and it's okay if that center triangle moves around just a little bit. I'm line it up and then fold. Okay, so now I'm going to flip down to the bottom side so that we don't have to unfold and refold and unfold and refold. So I'm going to turn the whole thing around. So now I'm going to take that top point and I'm going to fold it down to the center. I always try to find there's a way of saving myself just a few seconds of time when I'm making a giant project like this or if I'm in a hurry. So then I'm gonna take this top edge and I'm gonna fold it over. So then if I were to rotate it after I fold it, it's gonna kind of look like a long necktie. I'm just gonna fold it. So then you see it kind of looks like a necktie. Not that I need a necktie, but it looks like a necktie. So then we're gonna unfold all of those folds that we just did, so we're back out to our giant square. And I'm gonna rotate it once. So now I have all of these wonderful vertical folds. And I'm gonna do those folds that we just did two more times. So I'm gonna take my top point and I'm gonna fold it down to the center. In the center and grease it. And then I'm gonna take the top edge and I'm gonna fold it over to the center. And then crease it. All right, then we're gonna rotate it, spin it. So we're taking the bottom point and making it the top. And we're gonna do this one last time. So we're gonna take that top point and we're gonna fold it down to the center. Take that top edge and we're gonna fold it down. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to, while it's still folded, I'm gonna take this edge and I am going to carefully create a diagonal fold that's gonna line up with this edge right here. I'm gonna take this whole part and I'm gonna fold it over and crease it. 
Another way of finding where to fold it over is you've got a crease line from our previous sets of folds going right along that edge. So we're gonna unfold it, and now we're gonna make it go in the opposite direction. So we're creating a great big X right here. So I'm gonna take this bottom edge, and I'm gonna fold it, and it's gonna also line up with that same set of crease folds that are going vertically. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna take the edge and I'm gonna fold it over so it lines up with this little diagonal right here. This is gonna help make the next step a little bit easier. When we're gonna take the sides and we're gonna collapse them in a little bit. So I'm gonna unfold it and I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna follow this line right there. It's harder to see backwards. Okay, there we go. Okay, so next we're gonna unfold. Now it's gonna be the fun and tricky part. So we're gonna open up, but we're not gonna unfold. We're gonna find our two edges, and now we're gonna take all those diagonal folds that we just did, and we're gonna collapse them in, just like this. So you're gonna have two layers of paper, lining up and hiding each other. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more time up close. So I've got my two edges, and with all those diagonal folds that we just did, we're gonna collapse and bring these sides sort of upright and together, and then we're gonna collapse the top part. And then it's just gonna go over the edge. I sometimes have to roll it forward a little bit to help meet there in the middle. So now we have to do the other side. So let's rotate it around. I'm gonna spin it around. So I've got our two sides. We already have three sides up, so you're so close. This is our last side. We're gonna take those little diagonals. Sometimes I have to encourage some of our folds to go the way that I want. So I'm gonna take these diagonal folds that we just put in there, and I'm gonna push them in, and I'm gonna take that back flap, that really long tongue, and I'm just gonna kind of squish it down. So I'm flattening it over a little triangle. I'm just gonna go right up over the top, and I'm gonna flatten it. Sometimes I have to roll the edge up, and there we go. So now we have our gift box, bottom or top, all assembled. So sometimes I have to just go around and recrease that top edge just to kind of help make it stay put. If you've got a glue stick or some tape, you're welcome to glue down the inside flaps. You can just kind of pick them up and put some glue down behind, or just even a piece of tape or washi tape or something. Even a sticker works right there in the center of your box just to help keep all of those little tails together. So then once you've made both boxes, remember you might wanna make one just a little bit smaller. When I'm working with a 12 by 12 piece of paper, I usually trim it by about a quarter of an inch, no more than a quarter of an inch, this big, so that way they'll fit together nicely. Or if you're using slightly forgiving and flexible paper, they can be the identical size. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon.